let's go to slide uh, uh, forward a couple of slides. Exactly. So the aim of TAF is to implement a framework to organize data, methods, and results used in ICES assessments so they are easy to find and rerun. Next one. Uh, so for you guys that are all uh, experts, stock assessors, the, the relevance of this is, well, just think of the task that ICES is facing, handling around 200 stock assessments every year, the data preparation, the analysis, the peer review, and, and the advice. And we want it to be open in that all the data files, the model scripts, and the results are available online. It's re reproducible. As anyone, including you, can browse, download, and run the assessment on your own computer or on the ICES tab server, the final run. Uh, the assessment is private while well, people, people are working. The assessments are uh, private while people are working on them, but the repository on uh, GitHub and on the TAF server becomes public after the peer review and advice is released. And uh, it's also very useful for us to see exactly what has changed in the data and model setup between years. And also by having a standard sequence of scripts for all the diverse uh, assessments, uh, it really facilitates quality checks and peer review. Sorry about the sound. Uh, next one. So for the first two years, Colin and I uh, were working on the design and implementation. Uh, the design is that the stock assessors, they write standard R scripts that prepare the data and run the analysis. And the implementation is, uh, there's an, a package on CRAN called ICES TAF that has uh, core functions. And importantly, there's also a web server uh, where people can browse, modify, and run the assessments. And uh, we have uh, some official sort of uh, stocks as, as demos that people can try out and uh, learn from. And but in the in the later two years of the project, sort of 2018 to 20, it's all about training. We have an introductory video on uh, on YouTube. We have a good deal of user documentation, both in R and outside. And we're working with the uh, scientists to support them. And they themselves are then deploying a lot of assessments into TAF. And uh, by now, there are maybe I don't know 60 or 80 or so. TAF assessments. Okay. So this is a diagram just showing the general flow from data preparation to running the model and to extracting the results of interest. Um, in the best case, the data are coming from uh, databases at ICES or elsewhere, uh, but people are also, of course, able to upload files uh, with uh, metadata. And uh, the results, in every case, are uploaded to ICES database of uh, stock assessment results. So in the best case, it's a, a transparent pipeline from database to database, showing every uh, step of the analysis. Next one. So really, it's about these four R scripts, you could say. Uh, the first script, data.r, is about pre-processing the data you're sort of gathering the data, you're maybe filtering out some years, you might be uh, calculating some plus group in the data, all these sort of pre-processing, we want that uh, captured in our scripts. And that data.r, it writes out the uh, data tables that are used in the assessment. In model.r, it's often the shortest script, it simply runs the model. Uh, it can use an R package or invoke uh, an external application and uh, some files appear after that. And that is where output.r uh, picks it up. It, it reads the results of interest and writes out some neatly formatted tables of numbers at h, f at h, and uh, some of the tables. And the fourth one, report.r, that is after all this hard work of getting all, everything into r, it's a very convenient place to prepare the plots and tables uh, for the stock assessment report. Next one. So this is just uh, uh, a view of what the uh, web server looks like. 
Uh, by now, it's taf.isis.dk. This was an earlier snapshot, taf.isis.local. It uh, reads or, or it sort of shows the sequence of, of things, how it's going from data through input, model, output, and report. And each uh, script has some uh, standard sort of uh, header that is the same for all the uh, different assessments. Next, please. The results and the data are available on the same uh, server. So you can uh, access this uh, CSV table, summary table in this case with Spanish stock biomass and recruitment and things like that. Uh, you can download it or on the next slide, more commonly perhaps read it into R and do something with it, plot or, or do some analysis. Next one. Um, we, we're using GitHub to store all the uh, scripts and uh, also on a, on a GitHub branch, we store snapshots of the uh, data and software that is used. Um, so you can recognize the scripts there, data.r, model.r, output.r. And on the next slide, we have a lot of sort of free benefits coming from GitHub. It's easy to compare changes, who did what, when, and why. Next. And uh, compare between years or, or between comments what was changed. Uh, next one. And the place where we store uh, ICES packages, uh, over the three years, we've created uh, a suite of packages, many of them on CRAN, all starting with ICES, this or that. Uh, there's ICES advice, ICES DATRAS, ICES SAC, ICES TAC. And ICES TAF is the, the, the sort of core package to, to run with TAF. But as, uh, yeah, in reality, you don't really need any package, ICES TAF or anything else to, uh, to use a TAF workflow. All you need is just these uh, four standard scripts that run sequentially, one after the other. So there's nothing very IC specific at all. It, it basically fits anything that has input and uh, analysis and, and output. Next one. So the benefits are that it's easy to find the data and results uh, from the final assessment. So that was a big uh, hurdle in the past that uh, IC stock assessments, they, the stock assessors were asked to put the data and the results and, and the model in, in a zip file and store it somewhere. And it was very random what that could contain if it contained anything. Uh, it supports open and reproducible science and improves uh, quality control. And it's easy for scientists around the world like you to uh, get a hold of the ISIS data. Maybe you're interested in comparing the Atlantic versus the Baltic or Indian Ocean or uh, the Pacific with how maturity is changing or, or weighted age or, or anything else. So it's really a, a big pile of data that become available more easily than in the past. And uh, it's once you have scripted your analysis completely like that, it is much easier to run uh, the assessment next year with a new uh, year of data. And if people change jobs, like Colin Miller and I, we left on a somewhat short notice, it's really nice if the next person can just take over a TAF analysis like that and can run everything and, and uh, yeah, hit the ground running. And what we mean by existing and future tools can use TAF services is mainly just we are using pretty old technology in many, in most cases. I mean, it's our scripts, CSV files, uh, just on a web server. So people can put a lot of fancy stuff on top of this. Uh, think of Shiny or, uh, or our markdown documents and things like that. It sort of uh, matches well with what uh, people are experimenting with and what future tools uh, also will be using. Same. Next one, please. Uh, this, I will just uh, say that everything by now is on taf.isis.dk. This is uh, just a list of links. We have a, a flyer and a tutorial and the procedure and, and some examples. Next one. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is where we sort of sat down and thought of uh, people that are not working with ISIS assessments, what is still relevant for you in here? Uh, for you start, uh, stock assessment software developers, we thought of five sort of suggestions 
that make, uh, would uh, make life easier in TAP, but I think in general for open and reproducible uh, research. Uh, it is really nice if it is possible to run the model from within R. Uh, that can be uh, as an R package or, or just launching an external uh, executable. Most people are doing this already, that it's easy to run the model from R. Uh, number two, try to make it easy to dump CSV files of the main input data and results into standard text files. So uh, that's also something that is usually quite well done with uh, stock assessment software, but belongs on this sort of checklist. Number three, uh, try to make it possible to download and set up the software from an R script. Well, with an R package, that's really easy. You can just use install packages or install GitHub with other software. It uh, is often also easy. We just uh, maybe put the executable somewhere online where it can be downloaded. And as we see in number four, it would be really nice if that executable comes with the corresponding uh, source code that can also be downloaded. Uh, and number five, if the software is maintained as an R package on GitHub, try to tag significant releases. It's uh, it's a very important uh, thing uh, for reproducible research to be able to fetch a specific version of the package that is required for this analysis. Uh, we can also work with commit numbers or sort of commit uh, SHA codes, but it's way easier if people uh, take the time to tag uh, actual releases. Next slide, please. Uh, as for the stock assessors, we would encourage I think everyone to consider writing the stock assessment in our scripts. Again, most people are doing this to some extent, but number two, try to fully script the entire analysis all the way from data preparation to uh, spitting out tables and, and figures. And what do we mean by fully script is that the scripts are run sequentially. There's no manual uh, sort of work required in between. So each script, it ends by uh, dumping output uh, files that are used as input for the next script. Uh, number three, try to write scripts that will run on any computer. When we pick up people's scripts, we often see that they may not run on our computer. Uh, so uh, using relative paths is of course one basic uh, advice. And uh, just in general, think uh, of how you can write things so it will run on any computer. Of course, keeping data and, and software online where they can be downloaded is also helpful. Uh, finally, consider if you want to sort of mimic how TAF works or even uh, use the ICS TAF package, consider structuring the scripts as data.r, model.r, output.r, and report.r with files created at the end of each script. Uh, this separates the analysis into steps that are easy to develop, maintain, and review. Uh, so some of you uh, act as ICES reviewers every once in a while, and you will probably find your job easier now that all the assessments have this sort of standard structure, even if the assessments themselves are wildly diverse. There's some something in common that makes life easier for everybody. Next step. Uh, yeah, this was just a, a, a review of, of the relevance here. So next one. Uh, I just wanted to mention briefly this uh, thing that uh, this initialization step that we call the that we call the bootstrap procedure. So it's not the bootstrap uh, of in statistical sense, but rather in the computer science sense, where you sort of uh, bring together and prepare all the components before running something, like we put a computer. So the bootstrap procedure that uh, I won't go into great detail is really the important uh, part of, of uh, declaring all the software with the uh, versions and all the uh, input data that are then uh, stored and archived uh, forever on the GitHub repository to make sure that five or 10 years later, you can still run exactly this analysis. Uh, next slide, please. So that is it. I, I uh, appreciate uh, trying to give this uh, presentation remotely, presentation remotely, and I realize the the challenges both for me and for you guys. But uh, I really appreciate uh, your attention, and uh, I have put our email addresses there. But it might be easier just to write to taf at ic's.dk. That reaches Colin, me, and uh, and a couple of other people. 
and uh, I realize it is nine o'clock, but if there's time for one or two questions, that'd be cool. So thanks, so thanks Annie. Annie. Appreciate your um, being available to give this presentation. And um, yeah, we so we have it's it's late, but because we have a discussion period before the break, uh -huh. we have some time for questions. Um, so is there anyone that has any questions for Annie? No. Okay, so I'll start it off anyway. Um, so Arnie, why did you choose R instead of some other software like Python or something else? What, what are the advantages of R? Exactly. The, uh, the, the two main platforms that we've sort of placed our eggs in are uh, R on one hand, and I suppose GitHub on the other. If GitHub goes away, we'll find something similar, but you're absolutely right that we, we do put all our eggs in, in R in, in many ways. Um, I suppose we just thought of how are people doing things already? We, we didn't want to radically change how people are working, just sort of align them all in the same direction. And, and uh, we have found that people hit the ground running. And once they discover the useful features in TAF, they just give us thumbs up. You know, it's not uh, forcing people to do anything different from what they're already doing. So I think that was our main reason. Yeah, Rick. Hi, Arnie. This is Rick. Uh, hey. Thanks for the presentation. So, can you hear uh, Rick, Arnie? I can hear him well. Thanks. Okay, good. Okay, good, good. So, I mean, my question is about the the scripting. Uh, I mean, that's not something that I see routinely being done. We certainly are seeing much more development of scripts to take the final model outputs and produce reports from those final model outputs. But the idea of scripting the sequence of analyses uh, and being able to assemble that all concisely, uh, as, as laudable as that goal is, it seems a pretty uh, big lift to get to that stage. So do you have some examples of people who transitioned from what they were doing before to creating something like that? Yes. Uh uh, for sure, uh, uh, a few, maybe about 50 or so examples from maybe 30 people. Um, the, yeah, I mean, if I just think about uh, stock synth synthesis, for example, they, the people they have uh, run all these R commands to get all the way from data preparation to, uh, you know, producing the plots and, uh, and tables. So I don't see it as a, as a major effort to to put that in, in in a script I think many people do it already I'm, I'm guessing but uh, yeah I think uh, from when I, exactly, I think many people have sort of semi scripted their work flow you know there, there's some manual work uh, done in between and uh, so it's often just about sort of yeah uh, gluing together the, the the scripts uh, that is uh, what we're helping people to do and uh, the way we glue them together is by dumping files at the end of each script uh, just uh, CSV files basically okay uh, any other questions for Arnie okay we don't have any more questions okay thanks a lot Arnie um, yeah just uh, so the rest of the rest of the morning is about uh, user interfaces and things. So hopefully you're able to stay online and, and listen to that. But we I was just going to, I was just going to say that, that I'm definitely staying for the talks and, and maybe I'll chime in during the main discussion. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hi everyone.